shut up. Just shut up. We are very, very lucky to be able to block sound in that manner. And whatever this is called, I'm going to call it physical sound. The idea of blocking sound waves through a medium that it can't, at least too often, pass through. This does not exist in Blender. Not that people are really using sound in Blender, but it's just such an interesting concept. We gotta make a tutorial about it. So, you can get the project files for everything I'm about to do on my website, cgmatter.com, and a free add-on for something I said would make the process a bit uh, easier. So, shut up. Love it. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we're going to talk about that later. Did you know Blender has a sound system? It's true, it is the least used thing in Blender, if I had to guess. So if you go to speaker object, this can actually emit sound in kind of a 3D sense, where it knows where it is relative to a camera, etc. You go to the sound settings, and you say, what sound do you want to play? I'm just going to make a pure tone, basically a sine wave. Generate tone. I'm thinking 400 hertz is going to be like, you can hear it, but it, it doesn't hurt your ears. So let's generate some. Okay, sorry if that came out loud, I don't know. I'm gonna call this Trash Audio. And now in Blender, I can import this in as a sound source. There we go. Basic controls, volume is the volume. No volume, max volume, pitch. Now it's deeper, now it's higher pitched. There are other settings. For example, you have a tensuation, which means if you go further away, is it gonna be quieter? So, so it's this loud and now let's zoom out. Wow, that's glitchy. It's quieter. Additionally, I believe it does do stereo, where if you put it like way off to the side on the left. But the point is we have the sound thing, nobody ever fucking uses it. And one thing that I think is interesting is it is missing this kind of like what I'm gonna call a physical property, where if I have a medium, so this is a wall, the sound just kind of travels through it and doesn't get blocked by the wall. Imagine you have an animation where you're in a corridor. So this is our camera, we're gonna travel around this corner. I'd like it so that it's pretty quiet as I go, as I go, as I go, but then when I kind of expose myself around this corner, it immediately gets louder instead of the volume purely being dependent on the distance. Because if I then had a camera like outside this wall, it would be really loud because it doesn't consider the collision surfaces. Here's how I plan to fix that. So I'm going to add a geometry nodes object. Don't need any of this. And I'm going to approximate the speaker by having kind of like a little sound source, a little sphere that emits sound particles in every single direction. I only will hear the particles that happen to go near the camera, almost like we have a big ear. Let's add in a UV sphere with like a really tiny radius to kind of approximate this. And we'll say that the sound particles can literally be spawned on the surface and then we'll like shoot them out. So let's have a thousand, make them significantly smaller and way more of them. This is going to be my sound source. I'll make that red. This is going to be make the particles. These can be orange. So to have a ear, you know, basically where the camera is, I'm going to approximate that by making a grid that basically is a catcher, a ray cast catcher. It needs to be in the position of the camera. If you bring in the camera, set it to relative, we have the location, rotation, and scale. I have the exact instructions of where it should be and which way it should be oriented. I'm going to take this grid and transform it by the transformation matrix. And now it is going to be locked into my camera, whichever way it is facing. Let's make this a bit bigger. And we're going to say that any particle that comes from the sphere that shoots and hits this is going to count as volume, whereas if it kind of goes off to infinity, it will not count. This is going to be my ear, and let's shoot out some rays. I'm going to do this with a ray cast, so I'm saying what do I want to shoot at? I want to shoot at this ear over here. They can just kind of go spherically or radially outwards based on the surface normal. To get the direction of the surface normal of where it was spawned, I'm just going to use this normal over here. And just to see kind of a visual representation, I'm going to move the particles to say if you hit the ear, move to where you did hit it. And you can see we get um, a couple of points here. You're going to notice that they're in a perfect grid, which is really weird. It's because the surface on which they spawn is like not smooth. It's very faceted. Just up the resolution of your like emitter. And now you have all of these random things that hit our ear. And to pick the volume, I just need to say how many of these particles do we have? So let's say we have 100 compared to however many we started with. And that proportion is going to tell us the volume. I basically want to count or accumulate 
accumulate the number of hits, and I care about this total. We're going to want to do this in proportion to how many points there were. So I'm going to take the randomly distributed points. I'm going to find their domain size, initial point number, hit point number, and I care about the proportion between these. I'm going to take the total and divide the point count. Seems good to me. And let's just do a bit of organization. I've been working on an add-on on the side to make this kind of thing easier. This is our sound ratio, in a sense. And now that we have that, the ultimate goal, which is tricky, is how do we get this sound ratio, in other words, the volume, to come over to the speaker? In other words, affecting the volume over here. Well, you might think, easy, I take this, I output it, and now we have the output. Oh, shit, it's an attribute. Maybe I can do a driver. Oh, wait, th there's nothing to do a driver on. So this is why it's kind of a uh, issue. Here's kind of a workaround around I thought of to get information or a single number from geo nodes to outside objects. And it's a bit convoluted, but follow me here. I'm going to make a UV sphere, a super, super tiny sphere. And that's actually pretty important. And I want the height of the sphere. In other words, saying what is the Z value? I want this to correspond to the volume. I'm going to transform geometry, which will let me move this up and down. How much do I want to transform it by? Well, this sound ratio number. You can't plug it in here because it is a field. So I need to say, what is the sound ratio on this other piece? of geometry. We don't need to be too fancy about it. I can just take the average, which is going to be the same number, of the total. So I want to find the average of our sound ratio relative to the points that were shot out, which I am going to isolate as a Z coordinate. Put that in the translation. Oh wait, scratch that. It isn't working because instead of a mesh, I'm trying to count the number of points in a point cloud. That's what it was. Okay, so now it actually is kind of going up, and I am going to scale this by a number like 10, so it's kind of more visual. And the interesting thing is now that I like move around my camera and stuff, you can see the volume is changing. You can imagine that this would capture a lot of sound because it is exactly facing our sound source. But then as I rotate this ear to not face it, the volume gets really, really tiny. And I'm claiming that moving a sphere up and down, even though it's still in GeoNodes, is enough to access that data. And before we continue, my friends, because we know each other that well, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the service that I personally use to make and host my website. So as I said, the project files, etc., are on cgmatter.com designed with Squarespace. Here's like a little uh, preview of what that might look like. There are many reasons to use Squarespace, but here are three why I personally choose it. First and foremost, I'm kind of pivoting and that would not be possible if it wasn't easy to sell products, in this case, memberships. You keep a high percentage, they take care of payments, whether it be like any credit card, PayPal, whatever else. And additionally, other than tracking statistics about that, you can see what people are going to your website. Are they coming from a YouTube video on their phone or on their laptop? These things matter. And then the thing most people like about Squarespace is it makes website design easy. And I personally like doing HTML, which it has good uh, integration for. You can make a website, head over to Squarespace and make one. And when you're ready to take that and launch it, you can use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Here is kind of the big insight. I can make a empty and this empty is a object outside of GeoNodes, right? It has a location that I can easily measure. And if I can then pin it to the sphere, then we've kind of sort of done it. And it turns out we can. For this empty, I'm going to add a constraint called a shrink wrap constraint. It's basically going to map onto a surface, and that surface is going to be this little dot. This empty is trying to get to the sphere, and it's doing like a reasonably good job. It's going to be slightly off, but good enough. Now, you might think, perfect, now our Z coordinate is updated. Oh no, it's not. The constraint doesn't actually update the Z location. It's almost like a internal position. Again, I need this so I can make a driver, but I don't have access to it. Here is the second big insight. As this moves up and down, it isn't stored in the Z component, but our Z information is stored internally in something called the world or local matrix. We can find that by going to the data API. This is like where it gets very convoluted, this part of Blender. All you really need to know is we can look at our objects, specifically the empty, and somewhere in here we have all this data, like is it a fake user, what is the name of the empty, etc. Somewhere in here we have the information we crave. I believe it is the local matrix. There's like a whole bunch of numbers, but one of them is not like a 0 or 1, it's this one, which is a 0.31. This is going to give us a bit of a hint. As I move Move this, that 0.31 is changing, and that is a internal number that basically represents the Z coordinate with the constraint or with a parent or any other dependency applied. I can take this, I can copy this as a new driver, and then for the speaker, where we care about the volume, this can be our driver pasting. Let's just kind of like animate the camera over time. It's going to be a bit jank, but you can see the volume of this as I play through is changing. So we've brought information from GeoNodes externally to the volume. You're going to see these numbers are pretty low. That's fine. Remember, we scaled up the sound ratio. I can just make it three times bigger. It's going to be trippy, but I'm going to click play. 
You can see as I moved it, it got quieter and louder depending on what was and wasn't facing the ear. Oh, and by the way, just saying, just a bit of a plug, if you don't want to get this like matrix information from here, I did make a add-on, which I'll make free for any website subscriber. Otherwise, it's going to be on Blender Market. So you can get this for free. It's called Relocation, which basically takes that coordinate we cared about before from the matrix and just has it right here. Accounts for constraints and parents and all this, but it's the same thing under the hood. Anyways, now we are doing the really kind of new part, the interesting part. I mean, this is already pretty new. I want to make a collider, something that the sound cannot pass through. We're going to have that be a sphere. So I want you to imagine we have a sound source. It's shooting out a lot of particles. Some of them are going to hit, but some of them are going to be, ooh, interrupted. And those ones aren't going to count. Well, how do we do that? I'm just going to add my collider. I'm going to set this to relative. I'm then going to join. So these are now both things the particle can hit, but I somehow need to differentiate the two. I'm going to store a custom attribute. This attribute is going to be a Boolean, going to be a Boolean called ear and make sure that is enabled. And you're going to see that some of the geometry, really just a few of the points are going to have the ear attribute enabled, whereas everything else from the sphere isn't. So I'm going to take the named attribute of the ear, connect that right there. And now we're not going to count the number of hits, but the number of hits that were the ear. In other words, not the uh, collider. I care about was it a hit and also was the attribute the ear. So it needs to satisfy both of these. And right now there is a sphere in the way. In other words, the volume is not as loud as it could be. But as soon as I move it out of the way, the volume's higher. Now it's like fully quiet because none of the sound can wrap around the sphere. And this is dynamic fully in the sense that I can scale this up. So now it's covering the camera, have it whoosh by. And let's try that. I'm going to play the sound. And now louder, quieter louder, quieter. So we've made a physical sound and you can take this much further. You can make echoes because if we have particles, you can have them bounce off of things and contribute to the volume. So you get a bit of extra, but let's kind of do that scenario I was talking about before. Let's just quickly model a bit of a corridor, not corridor crew, but corridor me. Camera starts here. It navigates to the corner while also rotating to face the sound source. We have something like that. And now if I play it, here's the big thing. I play it, it's almost silent and then it gets louder. So the hallway blocks the sound just so you can compare. This is what it was like without it right? It doesn't care. It cares about the distance, sure, but it doesn't care about the blocking. Isn't that cool? And because this is fully procedural, I can just kind of like, I don't know, I can add a wall. So I'm going to make a face and it's silent. And then the moment I get rid of it, you can hear it again. Wonder's sound is glitchy. That just, you know, that's part of the, the deal. What I want you to take away from this is like, yeah, we can do the sound thing that nobody uses, but this principle is global. Global, I say. Global for what? It's global for physics. So let's say you have a force field like a wind. Here's the cloth that it's affecting and the wind would kind of push it or whatever. If I want there to be an obstacle in the way, now the wind would only hit the top of this. Or if I move it over here, now it would only hit the bottom of this. And this is something we can do where the sound catcher, basically the camera, can just be the cloth saying how many parts particles hit the cloth, what parts of it are exposed to the wind. I should mention, if you want to render with audio, which is something I'm sure a lot of people didn't know you can do, you need this to be an FFmpeg video. Now in the encoding, there's also an audio codec. So let's have that be an MP3. The video can be whatever. I'm not really too concerned with what this looks like. And let's render this bad boy. Okay, it is done rendering. Look at that. So if you wanted to make, like, I think people used to use this, by the way, for the game engine, like back when Blender could make video games. But even with like the movie Flow, I saw recently Oscar winning Blender, blah, blah, blah. Very good movie, but the sound is very like position dependent. As the cat goes near a stream, that gets louder and whatever. So it's kind of an interesting way to do physical sound design where you get the volume, kind of the stereo sound and the attenuation, but now also the colliders that block sound. You can do that all baked into a render. Project files, including the real location add-on for free for any website subscriber and I will talk to you or you can watch one of my new videos next time.